Okay class, thanks for tuning in for this quick review of Venn diagrams in our study of logic. This is a typical Venn diagram. We have a box that includes our total universe, which we'll normally name what that universe is. Uh, types of flowers, pets, whatever. And then in this case we have two categories. Now everything inside of a circle has the properties of category, in this case A, and over here category B. So we can organize our data into this type of a situation. So here in the middle, this group of elements in here, any x's that are in here, are inside of both circles, so they have properties A and B. Over here, any items that would be outside of this circle but inside this one would have properties of B but not A. And over here, likewise, we have A and not B, and then anything that's outside of both circles is still in our universe, and it doesn't have either one of those two properties. So let's give a more specific example that we can talk about. So this is a car dealership. They have vehicles on their lot, and we're going to break it into two categories, red and trucks. So red items or red vehicles are inside this circle and vehicles that are trucks are inside this circle. So any X's, and X, any dots that I could put inside this part here, or Y in general, has both of the properties. These are red trucks. Anything over here, an item Z, for example, if Z was a particular item, is a truck that is not red. And item X over here, what would its properties be? Well, it's not a truck, and it is red. So it's a red vehicle. It's not a truck. Maybe a red motorcycle or a red car. And how about an item W outside here? Well, it's not a truck, and it's not red. So it's a not red, not truck vehicle. So it's, you know, it could be a yellow, a yellow motor scooter. Who knows? But what we do know is it's not a truck, and it's not red. Okay, now this is one possible arrangement. In this, we would, we would draw a picture like this if we knew there's an intersection. This one, however, while it's still the same type of things, it's still vehicles on the lot, although I didn't label that here, uh, this time the red and truck circles have a difference. They don't intersect. So what this is telling you is there are no red trucks. And that's one thing we can conclude immediately looking at this thing. It has no red trucks in this world at all. This is possible. You'd have to know something about the dealership lot to know if it was this picture or the previous one. This is a red vehicle and not a truck. This is a truck, not red. And this is not red and is also not a truck. Here's a third possibility for our dealership. And so what do we see this time? The circle for trucks is completely contained in the circle for red. So no matter where you could pick a truck out of this circle, it is clearly going to be inside the red circle. So all of the trucks are red. Sometimes I'll get this uh, interpreted wrong from students. They'll say, everything red is a truck. Well, no, that's not the case. X here is red, and it's not inside the truck circle. So this is a red vehicle that's not a truck. This is a truck, and by definition, it's red, because all the trucks are red in this picture. And this is not red, and therefore we know for sure it's not a truck as we move into logic studies here in a moment. So which of these three pictures would be correct? The intersecting one, disjoint one, or all of them will depend on the world that the problem will set up in a logic discussion. Thank you for watching this first video.